And for more on this and today's top political stories, Kyle Cheney and Elena Treen join me now. Kyle is senior legal affairs reporter at Politico, and Elena is congressional reporter at Axios. So, Kyle, let's begin with what else you can tell us about this new hearing set for tomorrow. Uh, well, unfortunately, not very much. I mean, what we know is that the committee, you know, is attempting to run a very well and carefully choreographed set of hearings. So to suddenly drop a major hearing less than 24 hours in advance suggests that there's some real urgency behind whatever it is they intend to unveil. As you pointed out, they weren't going to come back till actually mid-July. So the fact that they suddenly dropped this on the calendar, it apparently was secretive even to some members of the committee or some staffers on the committee. Uh, this is supposed to be a quiet week while they reassess the evidence they had, uh, now turning into anything but. So it raises the prospect, if not the likelihood, this will look a lot different than the previous hearings, could be shorter and a little less pre-production. I would, you know, you'd think, again, we, we don't know much about the nature of the evidence. Um, you know, to do, we're trying to wrap our heads around what could require this level of urgency, that what, what couldn't wait until mid-July, what decisions are coming down, or what concerns do they have about the, the, the integrity of the evidence they're going to present. So we don't know much, but yes, it could be a very different type of hearing than what we've seen before. Elena, you have some new reporting about another figure who's been part of these hearings, Republican House Leader Kevin McCarthy, about some possible headaches on the horizon for Mr. McCarthy. Walk us through this. Yes. Well, Scott, uh, a lot of people within Republican leadership and some of the outside Republican groups um, and campaign arms are a little bit worried about the number of surging far right and controversial candidates that are in primaries, winning primaries, and could potentially win the general election in November. Um, and there is a question of how many of these candidates could win and whether they will be what they're calling political disruptors um, and potential headaches for Kevin McCarthy if he is to become speaker. Um, and we've seen this already. I mean, there's candidates like Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Borbert, um, Paul Gosar, all candidates who kind of think of themselves as untouchable in a sense and can really push the limit and go against McCarthy um, and some of his plans, and that would be, you know, even more dramatic if he becomes speaker and if Republicans take back the House. And so there is this dynamic that uh, people within leadership are, are quietly examining. And I think one really interesting note as well is that uh, McCarthy himself is really not getting very involved in interfering in some of these primaries, and he's learned his lesson uh, from past elections where some of these candidates who he was opposing did become uh, or were elected and are part of Congress. And he's hoping that he can earn some goodwill with them now um, rather than alienate them. And so a lot of um, a lot of things to be looking for. And we'll know more, of course, in the weeks ahead and as these primaries play out. But it's definitely a dynamic that could really become problematic for Kevin McCarthy and others within House GOP leadership. Now, Lena, this is a year in which the political issues were dominated by gas and grocery prices until the last few weeks, in which the January 6 hearings that Kyle was reporting on have become prominent. And, of course, the Supreme Court ruling has become supremely com um, prominent this week and this month. So, Elena, what potential executive actions do you think the president can use to address this abortion issue now that Roe v. Wade's been struck down and now that it is so prominent? Well, it's a great question, Scott, but it's also a hard one to answer now because President Biden himself has said, and the White House continues to say, that they're very limited in what they can do at an executive level. But we do see progressives coming out, people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Pramila Jayapal, all really trying to ramp up pressure on President Biden to do something from the executive level. And they've proposed things like paying for people to travel, federal employees to travel to different states uh, if they seek an abortion, looking at whether they can open clinics on federal land, something that is unclear whether is legal given the Hyde Amendment, but something that they really want the White House to examine more closely. Kyle, I want to go back to you. Um, we were talking about the Supreme Court, among the many things you're tackling right now um, with your reporting. Looking at the uh, perceptions around the chief justice after what happened Friday and his grip on this high court after what happened Friday. What's your latest reporting? I mean, I mean, it's clear this is not John Roberts's court. And I think, you know, you've seen him labor over the years to try to build the sort of the court sort of in his image as someone who 
is not an ex not extreme and someone who likes to find at least some semblance of a of a compromise among the various wings of the court what you saw was a, a justice who's essentially chief justice who's essentially isolated uh, he signed his own concurring opinion he joined the majority essentially but uh, took great issue with their rationale and said, look, wh why do we have all this certainty around this issue? Really, if the majority or the minority, we should be have more humility than that. But he was isolated, he was alone. He was the only one who signed that opinion. And he shows you, you know, he probably hoped that he could convince at least a couple of his colleagues to join something like that. He could not. Uh, and if there's any illusion about, about who's running the court, it's, it's clear that, that the chief justice is not it. Yeah, uh, his voice can be heard, but it's it's the other voices on the court that have been dominating over the last few rulings and the last few days, with more rulings expected in the days ahead. Kyle Cheney, Elena Treen, you gave us extra time tonight. Thanks for your patience, and thanks for joining us.